So the first step would be the navigation. So it's the same as Blender. If you never use Blender, I would strongly recommend to use them because you have some interesting bridge with plasticity. So middle mouse to rotate, add middle mouse to snap to orthographic view, and then shift middle mouse to pan the camera. So to focus the camera, if you have different object, you have just to select it and hit slash, and it's going to focus only on the one selected. If you unselect everything and hit slash again, it's going to focus on the whole scene. You can also focus on different selections. So let's say you want to focus on those two ones, just have to select them and then hit slash again. And here it is. If you want to isolate a selection to work on something more precisely, just select the object that you want to isolate and hit dot, just like that. And you will be focusing on just one object. If you want to remove it, just click here or hit dot again. For the selection now, it's pretty much the same as Blender. We have the four components on the top left, the vertex mode, the edges, the faces, and the object. If you have all of four selected, you can select any of them. And if you want to only select one, you just have to click on one, two, or three. If you hold the shift button, you can have a multiple selection. So one of the biggest difference between Blender and Plasticity is the way we're going to work. So right now, as you can see, every time I'm selecting an edge, you're going to see this little yellow thing, which is actually the fillet mode which is going to always be activated by default because you use it a lot. And we're going to do fillet in that direction to create something straight or in the other one to create something rounder. And a powerful thing here is that if you remove one or two chamfer, it's going to preserve the edge that you had before. So every time you're adding a new bevel, you can always go back in your timeline without losing anything. Now for the faces, but let's say you have something like that, like a bevel around the face and you want to move this face. The big thing, the big difference here is that the chamfer is going to stay at the same angle. So as you can see, if I move the face, it keep the same chamfer. So if you want to extrude this face, you're going to have to hit E and extrude it. If you want to create a new object, hit B and the color is going to change. Hit Q to merge it with this piece. Let's say that now I want to move this piece. I just have to select all the faces that I want to move. Click J and now I'm going to translate it on one axis. The problem with the CAD modeling is that you cannot manipulate shapes like it was poly modeling. Like you cannot go on top like this or on the bottom because it's like mathematically incorrect. So now we can talk a bit more about the extrusion and the faces. So one of the main workflow here in plasticity is to create a new volume based on the face here. And you have some different things going on here. You can taper your new volume with A you can also add thickness to this new volume. And the other thing is if you want to have it combined with the, this part or if it's a new object. If you hit B, it's going to create a new object. And if you hit key, Q, it's going to merge with this one. Right click. And now I have this piece connected to the rest of the pieces. If you want to remove the wireframe here, you can just hit this button. You can still edit those faces. You can use the offset one. You can create, for example, a bevel inside. And even this one can be rotated. Like if you go into the rotate, you have some room to adjust the volume here. And as you can see, you have some limits but it's going to merge all the volume together. If you click O, you can also insert on the face to create a new edge. And this one can be pushed inside, for example. 
You can also do it on multiple faces. And if you hit E, you can change individual faces or the whole selection. And then those new faces can be adjusted. And as you can see, it's going to follow the chamfer that you have here. So once you're really familiar with the way it's working, it's going to become a bit more natural. Like, don't try to poly modeling. It's a very important thing. So now to create some more interesting volume, I'm going to go into the orthographic view. And I'm going to select line. So you have two types of line. This one, straight, or the curve. To complete a volume, you need to close the volume here, and it's going to become blue. Now, this blue area can be selected in face mode and extruded. If you hit tab, it's going to extrude on both parts. If you want to create a more complex volume, for example, let's draw a simple box. And let's say you want to add more complexity to this shape here. You can always remove element with the scissor here, the trim tool. Now I can erase what I don't need. You will see an highlight of the edge and you just left click. If you hit one, you will enter into vertex mode. And this one can be very useful if you want to adjust some of your shapes. You can even bevel them. And if you want to get very simple shape, you can remove what you don't need. And now we have just one big shape and this shape can be extruded again. Just like that. Those lines can be created on a surface, like here on the face, as you can see, on the middle, on this axis. The snaps works pretty great and it's pretty easy to use. You can also snap when you're extruding things by holding control. Like that. So now let's say that I want the symmetry in the middle here. As you can see, if I hit Alt X, I'm going to have the center here. You could use the F key here to find somewhere to snap. So this one can be perfect. And it's creating the perfect symmetry. If I want to be a bit more precise, you can, for example, create a new line. And I'm going to cut the axe of symmetry here. Selecting this one, C, selecting this. Right click, removing this one. And now, with Alt X, I'm going to select this face. And I can create the symmetry that I want. If you're not happy with this, Things, you can remove them, adjusting, for example, and then resymmetrizing on the right side. Okay, so now let's talk about the cut tool. So in our surface modeling, we tend to make a lot of cuts. So let's say I want to cut a big chunk here. I just have to create a line like that. If I want to have this one aligned, I just have to hit J, Control, and snap it here. And now I'm selecting this one, hit C, and it's going to cut through this line. Just removing this part, and I have a cut here. So if you want to be a bit more precise in your cut, you can, for example, start your curve on this axis here, Snap it, just like that. And as you can see, it's a bit messy, so I just have to snap this one here, Control, 
can control here to snap and then can redo the same operation. And you can start to add some detail if you want to. The curl tool works also with the spline curve. So let's say you want like a specific design here, like that, but make sure to not be too extreme. So I don't want to have the curve going over my shape here. I'm gonna keep it here and then I can do the same thing here. I can remove this one. The more advanced part would be here. So for example, you want to have something plain. I can select this face and use the plane from selection. And now I'm perfectly on top of this plane. And you can move around your uh, shape because it's still here. So on this construction plane now, I can draw my design. If you don't want to cut through everything, I would suggest to close the shape. So now we can push this one here like that. Uh, push a bit more here so it's going over everything. And I can remove this big chunk here. So now for the Boolean, let's create a volume here, for example. Gonna put it inside. So I hit Q. I'm gonna select the target body, which is this one, and the tool body, which is gonna be this one. And it's creating a hole inside. This brain can have different operations, as you can see here. And if you hit Shift Q, it's gonna slice it. If you hit Q, it's gonna union it. And if you hit W for the difference, E, the intersection. Let's say I want to have a hole here. You still have the option to keep the tool, which is quite important sometimes, which means that now I have a hole and still my thing here, which is pretty convenient. So I can create a bevel here, for example. So now let's say you want to create more cylindrical elements. You can use the line tool, and draw the profile of an object. I'm making sure that those two are aligned. And then I'm tracing the loft axis. And so now I can use the revolve tool to create my volume. Okay, now, so let's draw a bit more complex curve. Duplicate this one and let's scale it a bit. And then I'm gonna draw like a shape like that here and there. And now this shape, I can select those two edges and Pick loft and use those one as a guide. A shift click, and you have a shape. It, this one needs to be taken here on the right, bottom right. And now it's becoming a volume. And I can start adding some detail. I can cut some panel. Like anything can be done here. But I can always combine them, add some chamfer. And you have somehow like a aircraft panel.
And the last one would be the array modifier. So this one is quite simple. You just have to click here and you can use this as a center, shift wheel up or down to adjust the number. And you can also be less than 360 degrees. There's not so much parameter that you can move here. So if you're not happy with, let's say the rotation, maybe you should be sure of it before running the array. So let's say you want to see something like that. You're gonna have to delete everything and run a second time the radial array. There's also the uh, rectangular array, which is pretty, pretty nice. You can repeat stuff like that. And on both axes, so to make grids, that's perfect. All right, so this is it for this quick introduction. So if you keep going, you can achieve this type of result. Uh, there is nothing more than I use, than I show you today. So hopefully it's going to be helpful and see you later. Bye-bye.